Today, we're reviewing the 3020 Pro Ultra from SaneSmart. This CNC router retains the classic 30 by 20 centimeter machining area form factor, but comes with a heavily upgraded spindle motor and more powerful X, Y, and Z motors. In this video, I'll both stress test this machine through some aggressive pocket operations in aluminum, as well as build a practical project with it by machining some acrylic base plates for this custom keyboard that I built. As always, these machines from SaneSmart arrive heavily padded in a box full of foam, and are almost completely preassembled. There's only a few easy steps to follow, all of which are outlined with pictures in this handy booklet. The first step was to screw these rubber feet onto the base. Next, you just put the two halves of the machine together with a whole bunch of screws. Last comes mounting the spindle to the front of the machine, and then after you plug in two wires, you're all set to start machining. This experience is so much nicer than the hours and hours it used to take to assemble those completely DIY kit versions of these machines. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the first project. I recently 3D printed and hand wired this super ergonomic mechanical keyboard. It has these 3D printed base plates that I'm not 100% happy with. First, they're too flexible. It would help stiffen up the whole keyboard if they were made of a more rigid material. Second, I'd love if they were completely clear so I can flip over the keyboard and show people the wiring on the inside. I decided that a 3mm thick sheet of acrylic would be the perfect material to cut out some base plates. Luckily, not only is acrylic fairly cheap, it's also really easy to CNC with this machine. I first ran a quick test in a small scrap piece of acrylic to get my feed rate and spindle speed dialed in. I used a 2.5mm diameter bit with a single flute and set the router RPM to 4, which means roughly 20,000 RPM. And then I used a feed rate of about 70 inches per minute. Once I confirmed that I was happy with the surface finish, I put the big piece of acrylic on and clamped it down. One of the great things about this CNC machine is that even if your stock material is much larger than the machining area in the Y direction, it can hang off the end as much as you want, and you'll still be able to machine it. I used the same settings as before and ran the cutting operation on the real project. This piece of acrylic might look frosty, but once you peel off the protective film on both sides, it's actually completely clear. It should, however, be left on there while you're machining to protect it from scratches. At this point, knowing that we have such a powerful spindle motor at over 700 watts, and the most powerful drive motors out of any CNC that I've reviewed so far, it should be no surprise that soft materials like plastics, acrylic, wood, all those kinds of materials, are pieces of cake with the right bit and feed rate. If you want to see more details about machining those kinds of materials, make sure to check out some of my other review videos. What I'm really curious about is how well this machine handles aluminum. Metals of any kind have always been at the edge of the capability of these desktop style CNC machines, so I want to see if we can do the most aggressive cutting operation in aluminum, slotting. Slots require the entire front side of the bit to be engaged with the material, putting incredible force on the bit. When machining metals with less rigid machines, you usually want to stick to other kinds of clearing operations that only allow a small portion of the bit to come in contact with the material at a time. However, this wouldn't be a proper review video without some stress tests, so let's try out a pocket operation. I did a first test with a 1mm depth of cut, 400mm per minute feed rate, and 28,000 RPM spindle speed. It didn't go so well because the slot got gummed up with chips. I tried again with the same settings, but only half a millimeter depth of cut this time, and it worked beautifully. After cleaning out the chips from both of the slots, this is what they look like. The cuts are fairly accurate, with only about five hundredths of a millimeter deviance from the intended dimension. This indicates that there was minimal chatter during the operation. This is by far the fastest I've ever cut aluminum with a desktop CNC machine. If you need an affordable machine to cut aluminum, this is it. All in all, while this machine isn't huge in build volume, it does pack a punch in rigidity and power. This is the perfect desktop CNC for small to medium sized projects that make use of hard materials like aluminum or brass. If you're looking to make larger projects, or are only going to be making things out of softer materials like plastics or wood, here's a chart with my machine recommendations based on the type of project. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.